Okay, so I just want to set up some different view types on some sheets and I'm going to start with uh, the one that you probably have done the least so far and that's uh, an axonometric or an isometric 3D view and I'm starting here with the default 3D view and uh, I'm doing that because with Revit uh, that view type is a bit unusual uh, with your perspective views which you'll see come up with these names 3D view 1, 3D view 2 and so on uh, as you make additional camera views you can see I'm up to 3D view 13 I'll quickly go and make another camera view going through, let's go through here this time okay it'll automatically be renamed with a new view but when you use the tool uh, that you use to create a non-perspective 3D view which is either an axo or an isometric view uh, you click on the house here instead of going to the camera you just go to default 3D view which is the same as clicking on the house or I should show you as well on the view tab you get the same option to click on the house there for 3D house that will just take you to this default 3D view name which is 3D in those parentheses or the, the uh, you know, curly brackets and uh, and it'll just keep doing that so if I go again into another view click on the house and it just takes me back to that that default view so do you know what to do if you want to make a new uh, view of that type Is that you can that's, that's definitely an option so you can duplicate the view so if I right click there and go to duplicate and then I can choose either option here there's no detailing in this view so it doesn't matter which option I choose so now I've got 3D copy and I can right click there and then go to rename and so I'll call this uh, axonometric axon, axonometric 1 and then I can adjust that view so I might just change the angle a little bit set different graphics I'll set it to realistic and then to keep that view angle if you want to make sure that it doesn't change you can lock the view so down the bottom on the view control bar you've got the option there uh, the icon with the house uh, that has a little padlock on it uh, it gives you the option to save the orientation and lock it so now you'll see if you try to uh, drag on the cube that you can't do that and if I try to orbit using the shortcut it still won't work and that's really useful because often you want that view to remain exactly as it is uh, particularly if you're going to take it into another program like Photoshop or InDesign and work on it further because if you make changes and then you need to update that um, view in your graphics program you don't want to have to go and set up that view angle again if you ha you know have accidentally changed it so that's a really useful option with uh, isometric and axonometric views uh, so now I could go back to that original 3D view and keep duplicating it and so that's one way of making new 3D views uh, but it's not giving me the original settings when I do that so another option is to rename that default view so if I go there and just right click on that 3D in brackets go to rename and I call this axonometric axonometric 2 and again I'll just change that to a different angle so now if I click on the house notice there's no view with that default name in my list at the moment but now when I click on the house it will make a new one so that's the trick if you want this tool to create a new view for you you just need to make sure you don't have any views with that default name and it's a strange method but that's just the way it is in Revit and it's it's not too difficult once you've, uh, once you've done it a few times and they're really useful views uh, especially for clients often they struggle to read floor plans and, uh, and, and sections and the other views that you work with to do your designs and it's often easier for them to read a, uh, an axo or an isometric view 
So I'll go back to the ones I created earlier and just show you a couple of standard things you'll do to, to set up those views. Uh, so with this uh, project, it's obviously an interiors project and you don't just want to be showing the outside of your building. Uh, you want to show uh, obviously what it looks like inside. And uh, so a really useful option there is to turn on a section box. So you need to make sure firstly that you've got your view properties. Remember if you select something, like a wall or a roof, it'll give you the properties for that selected object in properties. And so if you have that, either click into a blank space or just press escape to make sure nothing's selected. And then you can go down, well firstly you'll see it says uh, 3D view now in properties. So that tells me it's my view properties that are being shown there. And I'll scroll down and turn on section box. And then once you select that box, you can click and drag on the arrows, take away parts of the building. So that's a really useful view to show your clients. And I'll just maybe bring it around to a better angle. Uh, maybe I'll just bring it up a little bit higher so it's not coming through the cupboards. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and so that section box won't print, but it's still a nice thing uh, to uh, have that hidden. And so just like any object in Revit, you can select it, right click, hide in view uh, elements. But then you can see floating above my, uh, my room, I've got these uh, parts of the lights that are left over. And I don't want to show them in this view, so it's still good to uh, often hide things rather than trying to do everything with the section box. Uh, I can, with the lights, go to hide in view category, and that'll hide all of them. And you may even want to hide a wall or two, so I might have these walls hidden and uh, again just hide in view elements and then these windows maybe ok so you can combine the section box and hiding to get different uh, different things showing uh, having shadows on in these views often is a good thing um, if you don't want the shadows to go outside the building into that blank space there, uh, a good option there is to turn off the ground plane, which you do in your sun settings. So just by clicking on that sun icon, you go to sun settings, and then here you've got the option to turn off the ground plane. And so that way it just takes the shadows off from those blank areas. And uh, so then, the last thing there is the scale. Uh, I'll also sorry, lock the view, so I'm just going to go down to the um, view control bar there and go to save orientation and lock view so that I can't change that view angle. And then the scale I'll set to 1 to 50. So now I'm going to go down to make a new sheet. In the project browser, I'm just going to right click on Sheets All and go to New Sheet. And I've already loaded some title blocks, but I just want to maybe show you that again. I'm going to go to Load. And then just make sure that you all have a shortcut to the, the main Revit library that we have set up for you here. So I've got it on the left over here. But just to show you that again, in case you don't have it, I'll remove this and I'll add it again. Okay, so this is how it'll be set up if you haven't added that Revit Library shortcut. And so to add it, it's fairly simple. You just browse at the top to P Drive, and then go to EDU DC Interior Design, and then you'll see the Revit Library folder. And all you need to do to make a shortcut is drag that over to that grey sidebar, release it and you'll have a Revit Library shortcut there that will remain on the computer you're working on. So now I can click there 
and this is a much bigger library than the one you have with the default setup. Uh, and so I'll go to title blocks and I've shown you the one that, uh, that I used previously that has the, uh, the TAFE logo and some other things in there. Uh, but uh, make sure you know about the blank pages. So here I'm going to just choose A3 metric blank. And they're extremely useful because for interiors projects, you'll often want fairly graphical title blocks. And you can do those in either Photoshop or InDesign. And so you're really just using Revit to set up the views on a page and then you'll add those things afterwards with those more graphical programs. So it's better to use a blank page in some cases. But it's still really useful because that tells you how big an A3 page is. And now I can go back to my axonometric view. So that was axo2. Here in my sheets, my last sheet was A106. And so to place that view onto the sheet, I can simply drag axonometric 2 now onto my page. And I can tell then how big this isometric or axonometric view is going to be at 1 to 50 on an A3 page. And so that, that's a really useful thing to have because just by looking in here, we don't know how big or how much room that view is going to take up on an A3 sheet. But if you have the sheet set up in Revit, even if you're not going to do the title block in Revit, uh, you can easily work out how big that view is going to be on your different page sizes. Uh, and so the final thing I'll show you there is the, um, the view title. So if I select that viewport, so the viewport, if you, have you done paper space in AutoCAD? Yeah. Oh good, so you've worked with viewports before, and so viewports in Revit are in many ways easier. So you can just select them by clicking onto the, onto the drawing, and you can move them around really easily. But then the tag, or the label down here, is going to move with it. Oh, yep, sure. Oh, no, it's funny. Oh, okay, <laughs> so then, uh, so then, if you want to move that title separately, the trick is to make sure nothing else is selected. So if this is selected, if you then try and click and drag on that title, it's still going to select the whole thing. So the trick to having that title selected separately is to, again, just make sure there's nothing selected. So I've clicked into a blank space, and now I can click on that title separately and move it. Or, another option is to select the whole viewport again, and then in properties, just go to viewport, no title. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're really annoying. Yeah, that's right, because they're pretty ugly, really. They're good for technical drawings, but for graphical work, uh, they don't look look that great. So often you want it fairly clean uh, when you're taking it out of Revit, just like this, and then you'll do all of that annotation in InDesign or yeah, Illustrator. Of course. Oh, absolutely. I encourage you to do that, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Well, they do better fonts as well. So InDesign, all Adobe programs uh, do amazing fonts, better than CAD programs. Because Adobe work with the people who make fonts, and, uh, or they make a lot themselves as well. And so they do a much better job than, uh, than a CAD program if you want nice, pretty graphics and text. So uh, I'll leave it at that and I'll do another video for setting up uh, different kinds of views on sheets. But uh, that should give you a pretty good idea about uh, basic isometric views. And, uh, and also, I'll also do another video later on um, exploded isometric and axonometric which is just when you have a few stacked on top of each other, basically. But again, I'll do that later.